Hello, and today I am very delighted to be uh, joined by James from our Family Wizard. Um, so James is a professional liaison and UK representative for our Family Wizard, which I'm going to tell you stats more about very shortly. His role includes educating judges, barristers, solicitors, mediators and many other family law professionals on the online tools that can be utilised to benefit and monitor parental contribution, I can't speak this morning, <laughs> communication <laughs> in high conflict cases. James travels the world, attend oh no he doesn't, he travels the country attending family law uh -huh. courts, where the world would be better though, wouldn't it? Well, I don't, we, we, I have been, I have, you know, we're based out in America, so I have been to America with our family wizard. Um, and there's a couple of international conferences that I'm hoping to go to. So hopefully it'll be world soon. Well, so, <laughs> but for now, it's just the country. We'll just leave world in. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully we'll get some more trips that way. Absolutely. Um, Fingers crossed. So James travels the country attending family law conferences, courts, workshops and seminars each year. Although I guess probably not for the last couple of years. Um, yeah. James spent four years as a teacher before working for our family wizard. Yeah. So... Oh, let's start with <laughs> what on earth is our family wizard? <laughs> yeah, good question. Uh, so for, for a basic outline, our family wizard is a co-parenting communication app. It offers a space for parents to communicate through during, before or after the, the divorce and separation process. Um, I say app, it can be used on, on any device that uses the internet, you know, laptop, iPad, desktop, uh, but, but most of our users use the app on their smartphone. And it has a series of features that have been made specifically for co-parenting communication um, and also for family law professionals as well. Um, so I can give you a quick run through of the features if you think that would be a helpful helpful starting point, Tamsin. I think so, because yeah. my co-parenting communication tends to be done with varying degrees of success <laughs> through, <Sure>. uh, <laughs> through uh, text, email, uh, WhatsApp. Yeah. So I'm guessing that our family wizard is slightly more swanky and clever than it is. the above. <laughs> like to, yeah, we'd like to hope so. I mean, there's there's a couple of issues with those methods of communication that we're all familiar with, you know, text and WhatsApp and whatnot. And um, first of all, there are so many, you know, and we see this happening with a lot of the family law professionals we work with. Well, you know, one parent sends a text, the other one responds on email and they reply on Facebook and it takes longer and it gets very confused. And um, it could be frustrating for, for everyone involved. On top of that, it is really easy to manipulate modern communication. Um, and anyone listening, I encourage you to go and try this. If you just go onto Google and search for you know fake whatsapp generators or fake email makers there are so many ways for free that you can make it look like someone sent you a message they never actually did um it's horrible it's nasty it's malicious but it is possible um to have a go tamden in, in, in your own time see it try it out it's, it's crazy how easy it is to make fake whatsapps i don't like the idea of that that's all right no. <laughs> no. it, is, it, is, it is really horrible it is but we, we do safeguard against that um, and we are also a one-stop shop so all the different various apps you might be using you know your calendar your whatsapp your email we're all in one place um, so our first feature is our message board and that's the space to send messages it's very familiar uh, to, to most of our users but it's like an informal email uh, the main difference is we have something called tone meter uh, tone meter is like an emo emotional spell check so it'll actually alert you if you're writing something that could potentially be deemed as offensive or inflammatory and give you a chance to think about what you've written before then choosing whether or not to send it and all those messages are fully accountable so it will say who sent the message on what date what time who first read it and that can't be changed or edited unlike other apps um, so it's full accountability on their communication they then have a shared calendar where they can input the parenting schedule they can do events one-time events holidays they can even swap the allocation of the time all within the calendar itself again they can be turned into reports too and info bank where you can store information about the family things like you know shoe size height weight um, school reports medications prescriptions basically all the nitty-gritty info and um, that's all stored in one place we then have a journal uh, and in the journal they can upload what is called a, a moment which is like a sort of like a social media you can upload pictures and videos videos um, but you choose who can see that within the our family wizard account uh, there's a check-in feature we can geotag your location so you can actually prove you in the right place at the right time uh, and there's also an expense log where you can track and pay back reimbursements that have been made towards uh, the child so it's a whole whole mountain of different features all in one place uh, and that's all accessible to, to two parents and then they can add what are called child accounts which are, which are free accounts 
uh, for the children and third party accounts, which are things for people like grandparents or guardians uh, who are involved and, and they're free as well. It's only the parents who will pay for their accounts and that's £79 per year per parent for their subscription, unless the parents are on any sort of legal aid, universal credit, any sort of low income, then they get free accounts. And there's a form they fill out on our website, which is ourfamilywizard.co.uk and they get free accounts. Um, so, so hopefully it's accessible to any sort of parent going through this process. Wow. <laughs> so for anybody li who listening, who's listening, who feels like they've been hit by a truck by that <laughs> uh, incredibly rapid rundown yes. of, of everything um, that our family was, does, I think it might be a plan to take it one by <laughs> one. By sure. one. Um, sure because that was very quick. Um, and I've seen my family was working and um, still I'm like, oh, hang on. <laughs> it's, a lot of, it's a lot of information to take in. It, yeah. it, it's got, it does so much stuff, I think is the, is the thing. So let's, let's start with the fact that, um, that you mentioned, I think I'm going to try and take this in the order that you- uh, <laughs> Sure, sure. So the, the, at the beginning you were saying that one of the massive benefits of, of our family wizard that is a that everything is all in one place so you've not got emails and whatsapps and and so on all in different places which can be confusing mm -hmm. and difficult to kind of pull off what the communication was that was said and okay. secondly that you said that um that it's easy to manipulate and mm -hmm. create fake emails and fake whatsapps etc yeah. so Tell me about why that might be a problem. Yeah, um, and, and this is something that we have worked on. So our family wizard has been going around for 20 years. It started out in America 20 years ago. We built the UK version about five years ago. So these features have been tailored around the specific needs from our users and those parents. And a lot of the feedback we got in our early days was, you know, when people were using things like WhatsApp and Facebook, and um, it is it's so easy to falsify those records. So if you're going to court and you are providing, you know, 20 sheets of printed off communication, which is a variation of all those things we've mentioned, WhatsApp, text, email, and without doing some pretty clever technical stuff, it is, it is really quite difficult to actually evidence whether those records were falsified. So if, if, you, if you go on, you know, whatsapp.net, uh, what.net.facebook or whatever, there are these websites, you put in the information so if it's a fake whatsapp one on the website you put in your telephone number as in the number you'd like that message to go to the the phone number of the person you'd like that message to have come from so let's say your ex-husband or your ex-wife you then type in the message on the website you click send on the website and that will then drop it into your whatsapp chat on your app as if that person had sent you the message um and it's it is really horrible it's really nasty but you can do that with pretty much anything gmail email text Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all of them, you can do that with. So we are safeguarding against that through our accountability. Um, and on top of that, it becomes really quite confusing. And this is a lot of feedback we get from family law practitioners. If you are needing to get records, if you are needing to clarify what exactly happened, it can be quite confusing. If someone sends a text and then three days later they respond, but on Facebook Messenger, and then they respond via email, it, it really doesn't make it make, make life easier for anyone involved in that process to try and filter through all those emails you've been cc'd into or whatever it, it puts everything in one place so we're trying to hopefully make that process of communication co-parenting communication easier um, and put the focus back on essentially you know putting the focus back on the child um you know if we, if we don't have to worry about who sent what message on what date at what time or oh no i never said this or no that wasn't true um if you know that everything is that saves that step of having to worry about what's true what not and put the focus back on okay actually what are we doing for the child this week what do what time do you need to, to pick up on that kind of thing um so hopefully we're alleviating some of those concerns if, if that answers your question yeah so it's it's kind of the the fact of having everything in one place is is about evidence essentially evidencing and that's not necessarily just going through whilst you're going through the divorce process but it could be if there were if there are subsequent issues afterwards regarding the children you're still using my family wizard to do all the communication everything's all in one place um and uh is able to be pulled off as a report so that the court can see exactly what's been what's been going off That's okay exactly. now my favorite bit of <laughs> my family wizard which yeah. sounds a bit odd 
but <laughs> is is this te- what did you call it a tone tone, tone meter tone meter, tone meter. Yes. see i think this is genius i sure. think most of us could do with a tone meter <laughs> in all aspects of our life yeah. <laughs> Because this is this is just brilliant. It's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's extremely intelligent technology. Yeah. You feel like your conscience sat on your shoulder, isn't it? Well, what, yeah, absolutely. We sort of describe it as kind of like a digital filter. So but back in the day before we had instant digital communication, something would happen and, you know, a parent would have time to sleep on it, or speak to a family member or a friend before then confronting the other parents. Now we are all guilty of being keyboard warriors. You know, something happens and we, we tweet about it or we text a friend before we even actually give ourselves time to digest that information. Um, so Tone Meter is a digital version of that filter. Essentially, when you're writing a message on our family wizard on our message board, it will alert their writer as they're writing the message of any language they've used that might be offensive, inflammatory, you know, might cause some sort of harm. It will flag that up and then give them the chance to think about it and then they can choose what to do. Now, it doesn't, doesn't stop them from sending it as it already is. It doesn't offer them an alternative phrase to change it into something else. Uh, and it doesn't alert the recipient parent the tone meter was used. So they don't get a not- notification saying, you know, you've just received a new aggressive message. It doesn't <laughs> alert that parent of tone meter's use. It gives that writing parent a chance <laughs> to think about it, have that language highlighted to them, and then give the put the emphasis on you choose how best you want to proceed given the information you have on screen here. And over time, as it's an annual subscription, so over the course of that year, hopefully tone meter will work alongside that parent to develop a healthier method of communication. I like that. Okay, yeah. so uh, apart from the, uh, d- just because I think this is genius, sure. apart from the really obvious, like it's presumably going to pick up any swearing and, and suggest that perhaps you don't want to, you don't want to use those sorts of words in communication. Sure. Um, does it like pick up passive aggressive? Does it pick up actually aggressive? What? Yeah, it, it does. Do you- it does. It's, so how it was, so it's an algorithm. So it picks up on the toning of phrases rather than necessarily bad words. So swearing is a really good example, actually. So we can use swear words in positive ways. And we, we like to do that in this country. You can you can write a sentence with a swear word in, but you've said it in a positive way. Um, you know, you know, expletives, but in, in positive ways. Tone meter won't flag those sentences, even though you've used a swear word it will know that the sentence overhaul is negative. It's an algorithm putting the, the uh, order of the words, the punctuation into an algorithm that will calculate whether it's negative or positive. But if you use the same swear word in the next sentence, but it's a negative swear word, and uh, sorry, a negative use of that word in the sentence, it will know that that sentence overall is negative. Um, so it is extremely clever. It, it is really good at picking up things like passive aggressive and sarcasm um, and that kind of thing. It's not, it's not perfect. Um, I always use the example of Michael McIntyre's sketch where he's talking about uh, the British, the great British public and how we describe being drunk. And we say, you can use any word to describe being drunk. You know, I was completely gazeboed last night. I was completely caravaned. We can at any point create a new slang word um, that, that could be deemed offensive in any way. Tone meter is not going to be able to pick up on your own creative uses of language in that sense. However, all the common stuff, all the normal ways of us communicating, writing, passive aggressive sarcasm, all that kind of thing, it's really very good at picking up. And, and it, it's also adaptive. So over time, we can add to it, we can introduce new phrases to the system. Um, it is very, very helpful in that scenario. I saw this temptation in my mind, but perhaps it's, this is because of how my brain works, but I'd be like really tempted to try and <laughs> create some slang that beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just you'd have you'd have to let the other person know that oh by the way this slang word is something offensive because if you're writing something like caravan which is Michael McIntyre's <laughs> only he really knows what that means in that scenario um, and then if we're using a you know a normal word or phrasing that that is common for for something that's offensive Tony will will pick that up um, so I think it is it should you know for for most of our everyday um, ways of communicating it will it will really make a difference yeah. No, I, I really like it. I think it's I think it's a really good idea. We we normally suggest um the you know by all means draft the email but but leave it in your draft box until mm-hmm. you've you know don't put the address in it until you're absolutely ready to send so you can't send it accidentally or write it on an old fashioned write it on a piece of paper and then yeah. chuck it away and then write yeah. what you ought to write. <laughs> so I think it's, yeah. it's the kind of 
modern version of that, Absolutely. modern and much cleverer version of that. Um, okay, I love that. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so the calendar set seems kind of fairly straightforward, but but one of the things that um, we talked about when you demonstrated it to us mm -hmm. was um, was using it to ensure that it's very clear to both parties when something's happening. So you know, when the exchange is happening, when the child is supposed to be with one parent or the other, and that you know that information is is all in one place and all in the same calendar so that they're accessing the same information at the same time. So there's not a, oh, well, you said it was X because exactly. the calendar in our family <laughs> wasn't, so it's different. <laughs> yeah, you've you hit the nail on the head. And that, that is exactly what it's there for. It's, it's color coded, first of all. So, you know, throughout the system, one color is assigned to one parent and the other, so they can see straight away what's going on in the calendar. Um, and then they both have so many creative options. And, and the main difference here is, everything because of the functionality of the calendar everything happens within the calendar so they don't actually have to then and go and message the parent and say oh we agreed that there would be two o'clock on tuesday not three o'clock can you adjust the calendar you don't have to send those type of back and forth messages anymore all the functions within the calendar actually allow you to do that um so both parents can create parenting schedules which are reoccurring uh, timing events so you know if it's school drop off for example that are the same times most weeks they can input that as a sort of backbone in the calendar where they can make adjustments as they go they can add holidays and um, which are longer period breaks events which are one-time events and then they can actually do swap swaps of times within the calendar so let's say for example dad wants to spend time with the child on saturday which is one of mum's allocated days in the calendar through the time swap feature they can actually say okay can i spend time with the child on saturday and in return you could spend time with the child on sunday which is one of my days and that's sort of essentially what that is and because it's all within our family wizard everything is, is recorded and accounted for so we don't have this back and forth argument like you described no you said two o'clock no no you said three o'clock we actually now have these accurate records of who said what and it's all recorded for both parents to see so they cannot hide anything from the other parents so there's no point in in doing it wrong to try and annoy the other parent because you can't get away with that it puts the emphasis on the parents of you know let's calendar this the most efficient way for the child put the focus on the child make it the most efficient and that will then naturally develop a healthier communication so that calendar really does alleviate a lot of those issues and push everything into one place yeah absolutely can mm -hmm. um can one parent move like move a time like that they're due to do something without the other parent knowing or noticing no they can't <laughs> they can't do anything in the calendar without the other parent being notified okay. so you know, if, if there's something in the calendar and they need to change the time uh they can, if it's an event they made themselves they can edit that time but that will be recorded and both parents will be notified uh okay. so if they have done it if they've edited it and it's incorrect the other parent will get a notification and they'll say oh i've just seen you've edited that uh, event i thought we agreed it was three o'clock pickup and um, please can you confirm something like that um if they want to do a swap of the time that's all approval based so you know if in the, that example we gave of you know oh can i have the child on saturday and you have them on, on sunday the other parent will get a request and they have to approve that um but before that's confirmed in the calendar and if they don't approve it they can re respond and say actually i can't do sunday but could i do after school tuesday and then once both parents agree everything in the calendar will change automatically they don't have to go back and manually adjust it all themselves um so it's all sort of communication within the calendar feature itself yeah. um yeah exactly okay mm -hmm. that's cool i like that okay yeah. and then i think the next thing that you mentioned was about um being able to track where you are the journal yes That's yeah it. so it's it's not yeah. quite tracking where you are <laughs> um, it's, it's, so there's Let's get that right <laughs> yeah yeah so there's there's three features within the journal one of them's called moments and that's where you can upload pictures and videos um so like social media you can upload a picture and say you know oh, i went for a walk with grandma today and upload some pictures the parent that uploads that post only they can choose who you can and cannot see it so they could choose to share it with you know, just dad, just mum, just the child, she can share with all of them or just themselves. Um, but they can't share it with anyone outside of our family visit. It can't be posted on other social media platforms. They can't like, they can't comment. It doesn't open a direct communication chain. Um, so it's like it's like social media, but it takes away the, the toxic, toxicity of a public social media forum. Um, the check-in feature, which I think you're referencing there, that essentially allows a parent to prove that they were in the right place at the right time. 
So let's say, um, you know, dad is, is picking up the child at four o'clock on Sunday. At four o'clock on Sunday, dad can go onto our family wizard, go to the journal and drop a pin in the map of his precise location and timestamp it. So essentially saying, here I was in this place at this time. Um, they have to be there. They can't sort of be at home and then move the pin to where they're meant to be. There. They have to be there. <laughs> it, it doesn't open a sort of tracking system. So you can't, the other parent can't click on the map three days later and see where it is then. It just takes a screenshot of their location saying, here I was yeah. in this place at this time. So it alleviates those arguments of, you know, you're an hour early. No, you're, you're an hour late. And um, you can actually sort of, yeah, this is where I was pro proving the right place at the right time. And the last thing you can do in the journals is sort of a written entry. So a standard sort of diary, post or blog kind of thing. Um, and again, but it's all access based. So the, the parent uploads that post, they choose who can and who can't see it. So um, that's, that was a feature we've introduced in the last couple of years. It's one of our newer features. Um, and it's been particularly helpful during lockdown and, and, and sort of adapting to the new life. And, you know, the child is spending perhaps more time with one parent than they had originally planned because of lockdown. So it's a good way to keep the other parent involved um, without getting social media involved, which uh, we know is a toxic space for, for co-parents. OK, cool. Yeah. Have we covered all the features? Two more. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're two more. So we've got the info bank, um, which is just a space to store information. So they can upload, you know, yeah. they can upload medical records or school reports, um, you yeah. know, little yeah. shoe yeah. signs, that kind of thing. And then an expense log. Um, and that's just to track reimbursements. So, you know, if if one parent has paid for the child's guitar lessons and they need to say to the other parent, we agreed this was a 50% split, they can upload a receipt and say to that parent, here's the receipt, here's the breakdown of the payment. Um, you know, please pay me when you, when you get a chance. So it's just a, a record for, for payment. Those are the last two features. Yeah. It sounds so lovely when you talk about it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's very kind. <laughs> yeah. um, and, um, and kind of uh, all very calm and all very sweet but we both know the reason that this needs to exist is that life's not really like that <laughs> so yeah. um before we started recording we were talking about an example where one parent is very keen to have an amicable settlement and wants to do things at, wants to do things right wants to try and communicate right but essentially they're talking to a brick wall and the other person sure. isn't engaged at all so mm -hmm. what what can they do to mm -hmm. because this sounds like it would be ideal in these yeah, things but if the other person's already not communicating mm -hmm. it's likely that they're then not going to agree to sure. uh, paying 79 pounds a year and actually using the app rather than going oh, oh i just sent you an email oh i just I just dropped you a text because it was easier. Yeah. So, yeah. How, what can we do about that? Yeah, um, and we we really do appreciate those situations, and we know that that not every parent is the same, and not every everyone's going to have the same techniques and methods of going through this. So, um, we we hope that there are some ways to help with these parents. And the first of those is is some type of order. Um, and we have a draft order language. It was something that was written for us by Judge Dancy as part of the most recent Children Act update. Um, so essentially, if the parents are going through court proceedings or they're working alongside a practitioner, whether that be a barrister, solicitor, mediator, whoever it might be, we have an order language, a template order language where you can actually stipulate to the parents using our family wizard as the exclusive space to communicate about sort of the child or the child arrangements. Um, and we see that being used every single day now we, we see orders coming in um whether that be judicial orders or, or, or otherwise stipulating that the parents will communicate exclusively through our family wizards so you know in those scenarios where you've got one parent who's keen and one parent who's less keen this is you know a, a more formal way of saying this is how you're going to communicate going forward um and if there's not a court proceedings then it's often the practitioners who say you know we think this is really going to benefit you um we want you to try this give it out here you go everyone who signs up to our family wizard gets a 30-day money back guarantee so you have a month to try it out essentially and if you're not if you're not if it's not working for you you know you give customer support call you get money back no questions asked so there is always that sort of trial period as well the alternative um, is what's called solo mode and this is something we're seeing more and more of so let's say you're representing uh, one of the parents and they're very keen on our family wizard and the other is less so they can actually sign up themselves put in the grandparents the children input the calendar input the info basically set it all up and get it ready to go send the other parent their login details and say to them we're all set up on our family wizard all the information you need is there here are your login details come and join when you're ready and that's an annual subscription so if that other parent doesn't engage with our family wizard for the first couple of weeks but every time they message the other parent saying oh what time's pickup they say all the information is on our family wizard 
they can then join <laughs> that existing account. Well, that's very annoying, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where all the information is. And then they can join that existing account and they've got, you know, 11 months of the year rest to go. And that's all been set up, ready to go. Um, so we're seeing that more, more and more as well. So hopefully there's a couple of options there for those parents who, who want to engage more. OK, so I get it. If you're going through court, you've got the you've got the option to add to any other orders that you're that you're Indeed. in court for. You can add you can add the, the um, our family wizard language to that. And if you're working with a lawyer, then they might suggest it. Mm -hmm. Do you see them suggesting it to the other party? Because I'm wondering if, you know, as I say, if you've got a side like a party that's just not playing yes ha, obviously they've got this so, solo option but mm -hmm. it really seems to work best if you've got both parties on it, it seems to be a bit of a drama if, they, if there's not is do, have you seen people go to court just for this or this type of order Sometimes, yeah, and it, and it does vary the type of orders we get, you know, sometimes it's a contact activity, sometimes it's an activity condition order, sometimes it's consent, sometimes it's just in the recital, um, and sometimes it's just reference, you know, sometimes the judge will, who will know about our family wizard who's been trained will say, you know, we encourage you to use our family wizard, um, and that's often the, the pushing point that the parents need, and if they're working alongside a solicitor or, or barrister, whoever it might be, who is aware of our family wizard is encouraging it and um, then then they can give it a trial um, we do have another option here we, we have what are called practitioner accounts and um, which i haven't mentioned yet. A, a practitioner account is essentially a free account for family law practitioners it's optional but it allows them to link in with their client's parents account and overview their activity and actually help them out with their accounts and um, they can actually set them up with our family wizard and that gives them two free sessions so they can log in twice for free to see what it's like before before paying and subscribing and that's another incentive there you know if you're in that situation where one of the practitioners is encouraging it they can set up the account for the parents they'll have that two logins for free to to you know, play around and see how they get on before then staying to, to pay and subscribe if, if they're not on low income. So the practitioner accounts are really helpful in that situation as well. Yeah, it does. It does seem like a, a pretty sensible option. Um, mm. How have you, have you kind of seen it working particularly well? Have you got any examples where you've, where you've seen it, it really doing the trick for, for a yeah. going through divorce or, or, you know, even out the other side. Um, oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, there's a, a good starting point for that is there's a testimonial section on our, on our website where we've got family law practitioners and parents who write about their experiences with our family wizard and saying how it helps and how it can help in their situations. The, the first one that comes to mind is um, Elaine Richardson, who's, who's a wonderful mediator, um, multidisciplinary, I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm saying. She, we've, I've done a lot of workshops with Elaine and she does this fantastic story of the family that she works with who um, before our family wizard couldn't be in the same room together. Uh, their communication was, was atrocious and it was really one of the most blocking points for them as a family. And they went on our family wizard um, and after a few months, Elaine had a professional account and she was, you know, access, she got permission from the parents to access their accounts to help with them with their language and she said that the first time she checked it after a few months she thought she got the wrong family because their communication had improved so much um, through our family wizard and she, she does highlight tone meter when she tells this story um, but it had improved so much that she wasn't sure if it was the right family they'd gone from not being able to be in the same room to being able to organize the child's schooling and they'd even added one of the parents new partners on there which was a, a point of a conversation that they couldn't handle before um, and it, they'd use it for, for pretty much everything i think elaine's story is on our website so, so do check that out um, but yes we have some some really really fantastic stories i mean on average families use our family wizard for between three and five years that's what that, that, that's what we've seen but we have families who've used it for over 15 years um, there really is no right or wrong length of time because once you've transcended past that difficult communication period it is so helpful in terms of organization you know for, for busy families you've got lots of children who do lots of things um, and i saw this as a teacher it is so so helpful in terms of that level of organization for the family it's sort of the administrative side of things um, as well as communication so it's, it's got benefits that, that live through, through many years yeah absolutely no it's, it, it it certainly sounds um it certainly sounds brilliant and i think that if if parents get to a point where they can be in the same room together rather than they they haven't been able to and i'm speaking as a 
a daughter of, uh, of uh, parents who can't uh, can't be in the same room oh, together yeah. um, because because it's you know there's a lot of animosity and you know my parents are not, uh, I'm showing my age now but like they <laughs> five eight six years ago and still mm -hmm. like still would struggle to, yeah. to be in the same room together and if you can get over that if you can use some sort of um some sort of app or whatever that mm -hmm. gets you through that means you can go and share in in the brilliant things that your kids accomplish you know going to Absolutely. you know let's work yeah. back but going to weddings children's christenings going to graduations going to parents evenings together you know all these things are so important and you know if if your app makes a difference to these i think it's uh... that's exactly right i mean we, we see ourselves as the bridge in the communication you know we, yeah. we help with that aspect of it so that they can be more amicable going forward um but you know we we haven't we haven't we haven't we haven't fixed it you know we haven't solved that issue of separation what we try and do is put the focus back on the child um which i know is aligned with with the, the family law community and those who are trying to encourage non-court dispute resolution and putting the focus back on the child so that the experience isn't as damaging for them you know if they are arguing about all these nitty gritty stuff and the child gets stuck in the middle of that and trust me when i was teaching i used to see that every single day that is what we are trying to alleviate putting put the focus on the child make sure the child isn't used as some sort of token going back and forth that is there as the child make them as happy as possible and then work out the other issues you have uh, through one, one one place that's that's really what we're trying to do here yeah i think that's absolutely spot on i think i think it it sounds amazing um mm -hmm. and uh, and i'm sure it's helping many many families and it is about getting the word out there now isn't it and, and kind of making sure as many people know about it as possible so that families do sign up to it and do because it it's not i don't want to kind of sound daft here but it's not mm. it's not a huge amount of expense to to sure. show that and mm. if obviously for those who are on lower incomes etc they do have that um that option to uh, to be able to access a, a free version so um That's it sounds right. absolutely brilliant and uh, james have i missed anything out uh, i don't think so just, <laughs> <laughs> just a thank you to you really for, for having me on and anyone who's listening who'd like to know more please, please do get in touch you know as tamson said i'm here to to train and educate that's what my role is so happy to give this training session anytime and uh, we do offer free accounts as well to family law practitioners so if you're a family law practitioner listening to this thinking yeah i have a family in mind i'd like to try this out for um give me an email my email address is jevans at ourfamilywizard.co.uk and we offer one free family account per practitioner for you to, to try it out and see what it's like with one of your clients so uh, that's one year's free account for both parents so email me anytime happy to set that up and uh, thank you again Tamsin, for having me on i really appreciate it that's an absolute pleasure just for people who don't um hear as fast as you talk <laughs> so, <laughs> give us your a lot of information to get out sorry <laughs> <laughs> give us your email address again and if you can yes. give us the website for our family wizard as well please of course the website is ourfamilywizard.co.uk <laughs> And my email address is jevans at ourfamilywizard.co.uk. Um, our contact information is on our website as well. So if you want to speak to customer support, that's a free phone number. You can call that seven days a week or you can email them. That, that's all on the website too. Brilliant. And we will put all of that in the show notes. So if you didn't manage to catch <laughs> yeah. James's very yeah. fast talking, <laughs> we, will, we will put that in the show notes for you. James, thank, thank you. you so much for joining me today. It's been, it's been really good. Uh, Thank I'm you. sure that this is going to be useful to uh, to so many people. Let's hope so. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it.